It's all well and good to draw big black arrows on the board. Hey there, it's Kevin. Uh, it is indeed well and good to draw black arrows on the board and the maps, but what, what matters also is that there's an opposition, and the opposition in this case are the Russians. And the Russians have to work out how they're going to take care of Moscow and their other core objectives they need to protect. And I have to make a confession, and you probably, if you, if you watch me play DAC2 twice and TBL twice, you'll know that I'm not terribly good uh, pulling together a solid defense. And one of the things that will make or break the play of this game is how we play the Soviet side. And I wanted to just share a few little uh, nuggets here that I have uh, gleaned from CSW and from emails exchanged with friends and uh, guys who played extensively uh, in the 10 plus year range and seek your uh, opinion and counsel before we kind of jump into doing anything at all with this, whether we do just the, the GP2 maps or the whole thing. Uh, who knows what, uh, what will transpire. Now, uh, the Germans do have the ability to very quickly uh, advance. Here's Brian's Kia. Uh, they start back over this area. They can be in Orel by turn one. Uh, similarly, I was looking at the Vassal map and ay, 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 ay. they could be here by turn one if things go well with a combat and an overrun here. So Bryant's can be pocketed on to almost completely on, on turn one, probably, in, uh, definitely by turn two, I think. Uh, now the Vyazma and Rejev area, a different story, they take a little bit longer, but there are from where the, the units are set up, there are opportunities to create fairly large pockets. And then there's a body of units which are up this area that will probably not do terribly much. And I'm thinking, it's actually, it's more right there, right here. Uh, I'm thinking of taking the Panzer formation, sorry, the SS formation from there and moving them down to here. I mentioned in the other video that I was curious about the Germans approaching uh, around this way as well, uh, just to follow up on some historical reading I've been doing. So as the Soviets, what are we gonna do? There seems to be little point in trying to protect this line other than uh, uh, speed bumps. There are a significant number of hedgehogs here though, which will slow down overrun attempts and, and, and uh, the combat effect, uh, combat opportunities marginally. So I'm thinking that as the Soviets, there are some things that are fundamentally have to happen. Number one, you have to defend in depth. And by defend in depth, I mean something that is, uh, has a reasonable number of hedgehog uh, steps in the first line, and then one or two uh, levels of uh, units behind it to prevent the, the uh, breaking of the line you know, the breaking of the line and then the follow through penetration. We want to, we want to force the, the, the Germans to mount, mass their units in one area, break the line, then in the, with an overrun if they can, then force them to try and do that again to the second line and then move through and attack in the third so that they're only moving forward three hexes at, at, at best. Now, with the number of units on the board and the, the, reinforcements and all the other factors that go into that, that's highly unlikely that the Soviets will have that ideal type of defensive situation. So we have to make do with the best that we have, and that's going to involve taking uh, high value, low action rating units and pairing them up with better high action rating units and, and building reasonable, reasonably good stacks in the key hexes that are going to matter, ideally in, in terrain that's beneficial to the defender. So I'm thinking as the, so, so, so that's, what, that's one of the things you have to do in terms of uh, the defense is build something that is deep, 
The second thing you need to do is husband resources and build up for the inevitable counterpunch that will happen. And there, there is the uh, ability, of course, to conduct the massive assault. And in fact, I think can, three of them can happen uh, anytime after the first week in December or thereabouts in 41. And that will not just be an attack. It will not just be a bunch of good units springing out in surprise somewhere and uh, having at the bad guys. Uh, the massive assault has to be something that's going to cause pain to the supply chain of the German player. So that is going to mean that in this section of the maps, that these red discs here would all be potential target locations now that I look at the map. And also uh, down on the left there, Kursk. They all, and RL as well, <clears throat> they would be great locations for counter punches. And I think that uh, however we pull a massive assault together, that it needs to be very compelling in its first one or two turns to take advantage of the initiative and the, the weather and all that sort of stuff. So, so, so there are two things. So defense in depth, the massive assault, uh, the, the use of that and the impact that that will have. And I guess the third thing that is always mentioned in these games is there is a lot of value uh, because of the way the system works there's a lot of value in uh, pulling, forcing the German player to defend. And by forcing him to defend, I mean that we're going to conduct attacks against his units and he will be forced to pay uh, 2T to defend at full strength. Now, if he doesn't want to defend at full strength, then he can not pay the 2T. This absorbs their uh, their supply and it can be expensive now we may take a lot of losses as the soviet player but arguably with the replacement rate we can probably afford to do that particularly if we're throwing uh kluge, kluge units at uh at the germans now at what point does that become gamey i don't know and at what point does that become uh, a game breaker uh, that's something I just don't know, and it's, uh, I might post up a question on CSW about that in the OCS forum. I'll have a look. Right, so that, that's this area, and I think that the, you know, the same applies, but probably more so uh, over here, if we look at uh, you know, the case blue maps. We've got uh, a fairly significant area that we're examining and trying to manage. And you've got the same problems with uh, you know, Fortress Rostov in the corner there. And you know, this massive area of open area and this open terrain, but with very little supply uh, opportunities. There's, you know, there's just a couple of rail lines that matter there. So depending on what forces are down here and where the Schwepunkt uh, actually does occur, uh, the Soviets need to be prepared to make a, a significant difference, uh, perhaps down here. You know, it may be that although Russia, uh, Moscow is under pressure, if we can if we can bundle up and knock out fifty or sixty divisions, or twenty divisions uh, in a massive assault down in this area, that might be something worth considering. I don't know. Once again, it have to come back to where are we, where are we focused? What are we, what are we, uh, what are we trying to achieve with the massive assault? And that should be the damage of supply lines, from from what I understand and what I read. All right, that's just my little uh, little uh, off the cuff extemporaneous thoughts on Soviet defense. Lots of terrain to cover. Whoops, crunch. We'll, uh, we'll just play all this by ear as we go and see see what happens and see who ends up uh, doing what to whom. And I will uh, talk to you guys soon.